All right, welcome. Welcome to uh, 2022. Welcome to Financial Computing 2. Welcome back. Good to virtually see you all again. Um, I'd like to have a look at the syllabus uh, briefly, so let me take a look at that. So, um, you can access the Canvas site for Financial Computing 2 and have a look at the syllabus. This is going to be very similar to what we did back in Financial Computing 1, so I'm not going to dwell on this uh, for a whole lot of time. Uh, I am me, uh, John K. Osland. My email addresses, as you may remember, well, you probably don't, are jostland at andrew.cmu.edu. And my personal email is jkostland at gmail.com. You can feel free to use either email address. They both end up in the same inbox. I will be available to you uh, seven days a week, uh, pretty routinely between about 10 in the morning and 9 in the evening, frequently later than 9 in the evening. And I do plan to hold office hours every week, uh, you know, official office hours via Zoom every week from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. each Friday and from 10 a.m. to noon each Saturday. So hopefully, depending on where you're located, some of those office hours will work for you. And as in Financial Computing 1, if you would like to set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with me, please feel free to contact me by email, and I'll be happy to do that. Lectures will be between 10.10 a.m. and 11.40 a.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays in the usual classrooms. Now, per CMU policy, because of COVID-19 Omicron, uh, there will not be any live lectures during January. But I do expect to start doing live lectures in February for the first time in a couple of years, actually. Um, I will be posting pre-recorded videos on YouTube for all of the lectures, uh, including, of course, the first two weeks. And I'm not going to require you to be physically in attendance for the lectures. You're welcome to come to the physical lectures and sit in the classroom and watch me dance around and wave my arms. <laughs> um, or, uh, or you can, uh, you know, skip that and watch things on YouTube. We'll consider the YouTube videos to be the official lectures. And if I'm conducting a lecture in class and I run out of time to cover something I had planned to cover, uh, I will direct you to the YouTube videos for the last you know, few minutes of whatever it is I didn't have time for. Okay. We will have five teaching assistants for the course. Mohil, Jason, Samya, Sakshi, and Shashali. I hope I got some of those names approximately correct. They will help me with grading homework and to some extent possibly grading quizzes, although the quizzes are uh, for the most part, just automatically graded. And they may also choose to hold office hours. That's for them to decide. You should feel free to contact them by email if you have questions, just as you might uh, contact me. Okay, um, the final exam will occur on Sunday, March 6th, between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., Eastern Time, U.S. Eastern Time, this will be an in-class, hands-on final exam. You've now been programming in Python for an entire semester, both in my course and various other courses. In this course, we're going to have an intensive introduction to the C++ programming language, and then you'll continue with C++ in Professor Kramkov's Financial Computing 3 course in Mini 4, and also in Professor Kramkov's Financial Computing 4 class, when you return in the fall, if you choose to take Financial Computing 4 as an elective course, which 
you should. <laughs> I strongly urge you to, to take his Financial Computing 4 course. Here are information about required software. Uh, we're going to be using basically the Visual Studio Code editing system with the Free Software Foundation. <laughs> Let me try that again. The Free Software Foundation's GNU C++ compiler and some related tools. I have posted documentation for that in an early announcement uh, and a video to walk through how that's done on Windows 10. If you're using a Mac, I have provided some written instructions that Professor Kramkov wrote uh, for how to get things set up on a Mac. There are various online sources of information about C++ that I encourage you to become familiar with. And here are optional but very highly recommended uh, books about uh, C++ programming. Okay, so Strustrup's C++ programming language book is about 1,200 pages, I think. Josudis' C++ Standard Library 2nd Edition book is about 1,000 pages. And Van de Voorde and Jesutis and Gregor's C++ Templates book is something like 800 pages, I think. So if you can manage to read your way through these 3,000 pages of these three books, uh, or instead of Strustrup's book, you can use the Lippmann, LaJoy, and Moo uh, primer, you'll know quite a bit, but you still won't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, C++ is a, is, a, is a massive language. It is a challenge to learn it, precisely because it is massive. But what I'm trying to do in this course is to give you a very solid, uh, you know, cornerstone foundation to enable you to do real work in C++ and to give you enough concepts, syntax, terminology so that you'll have a, a, a good foundation from which to build your, your future C++ expertise. I, I want to encourage you also to, uh, even if you don't feel like you're going to be doing C++ and if you, even if you like Python and would rather be doing Python, please take this very seriously because actually in any kind of technology related position, which being a quant certainly qualifies, knowing two languages well is much more than twice as valuable as knowing one language well. So if you know Python really well, that's great. If you know C++ really well, that's great. But if you know both Python and C++ really well, that is uh, a, a, you know, a killer combination. You'll, uh, you'll be very... Uh, valuable to lots of uh, potential employers. Okay, now the, the grading we've talked about uh, in the past, uh, as far as overall evaluation, 20% of your credit will be based on your homework assignments, 35% on topic quizzes associated with each lecture, and the final exam will be worth 45% of your course grade. And that will be a hands-on programming exam during the, uh, you know, following week seven. Um, I'm not going to read through this list of all these various topics. These are, you know, you can read through these yourselves. And if you have any questions, you can certainly ask me. But, uh, but these are the, the various topics we're going to discuss. And I may, if we have some time, throw in a couple more. Uh, and... Uh, you know, you will you will understand what these are about when we get to the lectures and lecture materials about them. As in Financial Computing 2, I'm going to ask you to work on homework in teams of two or possibly three people. Homework assignments are going to be due each Saturday. Uh, so for week one, just before midnight on Saturday, January 22nd, will be the homework deadline. The first homework is not very difficult. 
Topic quizzes will be as they were in FC1. You'll have up to f four chances uh, to pass each of the topic quizzes. You have to get a score of 87.5% or better to get an A on each of the quizzes. And the rest of this stuff, uh, I think you can read for yourselves. All right, so welcome, and good luck.